This uh, lesson I'm going to read is uh, a little bit longer than uh, uh, the poems that I've uh, been reading. Um, and it's called The Sky is Simply White. I am accosted by Jean Cocteau, who counsels me, read Marinetti, finish the Brandenburg poem, understand the gas heart, memorize the 15 propositions of God, take seriously the question, what have I got to lose? The goat in my throat, companionless, runs wild. I try to hesitate, but I traverse the walls. This among others. We think in eternity, but move slowly through time. This among others. Not A, not B, not this, not that. Each is each other. All is all other. I am the several subdivisions of my fellow man living in Dubuque, Framingham, Sonoma. I accept cowardice, but only in light of rack terrorism. I accept the fantastic. I accept the prophetic. I accept the lunatic but never fantasy, never lunacy, nap to the prophets. My mind rocks back and forth upon itself. One day, the metal will split. He sleeps, a sentry to his skin, the sun, the water, sand, the wind. His tongues, two friends, one grim, one trim, roll out sticky but neat as a pin. In his dreams, a butterfly enters the hole in the fat boy's eye. He shudders. The rope dancer accompanies herself with her shadows. Balzac. Sometimes it seems to me as if my brain were on fire and I were fated to die on the ruins of my mind. No Brandenburg concertos, no concerts, no wind. All's ushered out. Then it begins. A descent of rain, a white wind gusts. The place abounds in Icarus. Baudelaire's aspiration, absolute rest and continuous night. Let wisdom rot in prison. If only I could ease in the petty world of kings the placid tyranny of natural things. My cowardice speaks out of turn. And when the man went back again, the moon had doffed its diadem. In the dimness of the cafe, the manager is arranging the tables and chairs, the ashtrays, the siphons of soda water. It is six in the morning. The falcon is on his wrist. The weather is on his wing. The sky is simply white. The rain begins. Cocteau screams. The rain is no terrible epitaph. Thank you. Uh, this has an odd title. It's called Suicide Watch. Uh, it's about a watch. Uh, it has an uh, epigraph from uh, James Joyce's Araby, which goes, I lingered before her stall though I knew my stay was useless. I watched my friends check out the scene, check out their options, check out their futures, check out on the market of the world. The ghost of my companions haunt the crumb woods, the bell tower, the windy gallery, the red rooms of learning to wait. What else has life got to offer the living? Nothing is gained by remembering the oranges of that time, the sapphire mystery, and the dark dogs of dreaming. Where do they figure in the absence? One part of a hand is missing, missing from the dark face of a lost watch. What does the future hold? Hands, the hands of a watch. My father gave me a watch, but I misplaced it. My mother searched for it her whole life. What is a whole life? An insect limping back to the nest. All his insect friends are there. Brian the bee without a wing. Sam the ant, Sans antenna. Betsy beetle, carapace, craft. It's good to be home. It's good to be home. It's very good to be home, where we can linger before the useless stalls. <laughs> Part one, introduction to Magritte. I pick Magritte up from the bottom of a star. He is desolate with lavender. Who is it, he moans, touching my wrist with his wing. I help him to his feet, careful of his cedar leg. Behind his grimace, he is smiling. 
like a man drowning in warm water. Part two, first experience dawn. We climb through a busted window. Magritte cuts his arm. Blood drops out like rusty pennies. A mermaid standing on wet gravel waves to us. He dots his bowler. The black paraffin that fills his head spills out. This always happens. What's in your palm, he asks. She opens it. It's a baby oyster covered in cobweb. Part three, second experience, mid-morning. The day is as gray as a million salmon eggs. One sunpot building catches my attention. No, he says, under this arch. We cobble our way through old streets, past vegetable merchants, occasional hunchbacks, daughters yet to be consecrated. Arriving at the pier, I see a sailboat in dead wind. That is pathos, the Greek says, pointing to a barnacle. Part four, the woman. She folds and unfolds her kerchief, folding her eyes in her lap. Her fingers are long and drawn and thin like hollow reeds or scabbards. She is all meekness, all pastel. We see her at the scaffold, darkening in the air, where the clouds are heaving like minstrels and the hawks watch as they fly. Her majesty derives from open clouds. She derives from twilight. We salute her in tandem and gasp as her voice rises and rises into our eyes. Part five, Toledo. That evening, stepping, stepping over lengthening shadows, we're in Toledo, where the moon appears as the white bone of a rose, where four clouds create the horizon, where four sounds echo through the trees. At the curtain of the city, we come across a thin strand of finger belonging to El Greco. Give that to the woman, says Magritte. She has more need of the digit than we. Part six, bedtime narrative. And on that day, the creator said to speech, what makes your skin flat like the river? I shall give you wounds to perform in your flesh so that you may never be plain to me. And he was pleased with the lesion which he called silence and touched his lips to the sky. That place today is forbidden to birds. Part seven, waking. Now the tendon of God is stretched to plain view. A million onions have been carried to the mirror. Long birds fly in broken formation, all as amethyst and milk. Without warning, the white sword crashes down on orthodoxy. The sky splits open like hell's abortion. A Saracen sun advances on Magritte. Oh.